Hello, it's uh, Frankenstein Chat, part two. Um, because as soon as we ended that last episode, Stan and I said we've probably missed off one of the best guests we've had. And that's last week's guest, Jenny Webb, uh, Jennifer Webb. Um, and we have now just spent, not recording it, the last sort of 10 minutes chatting about stuff that she raised. Um, so I don't know, do you want to say what sort of impact it had on you, Stan? Uh, I, I, well, the first comment, I think, was, was somebody on, who commented that it was the only guest who'd kept us both quiet for most of the thing. But it was just such passion and such a drive for um, teacher expectations that it, it, it refreshed your, your, your feeling about, about teaching, for me anyway. It was just the kind of drive and the kind of passion that I hope I had when I started teaching and I hope it's still there. And sometimes when you do uh, CPD with, with school leaders, you can find that under the surface. Just It doesn't take much to remind people why they came into teaching, what they believe in, and it's there. I just yeah. think there are, there are more people like Jenny who can um, inflame that. That'll be that'll be really good for for where schools are going. I think also for me, we we, we did chat about her as a leader, um, and um, because of her uh, her ethnicity, you know, the sort of the, the family um, history, the it, it, she would be a very interesting uh, guest to come back and talk about. Are there some barriers to um, to to certain ethnic groups, even on the, the male uh, female side, in terms of um, making progress up the slippery slope towards uh, senior leadership. Um, it would be really interesting because I think she was, I, I don't think that Jenny Webb would allow that to get in the way, you know, because she's got that grit, oh, isn't she? She's got that determination. I mean, um, I, uh, so I think that, uh, It'd be interesting to see what views she she has. Bearing in mind, you know, we're at the end of our career. You know, we were uh, atypical male, um, white. You know, when we were coming through, that's that that, that was uh, certainly in secondaries. That was the norm. In primaries, it was you know probably more men got to see leadership positions than women. Definitely outnumbered yeah. the men massively. Yeah, definitely. That, that was, our, you know, I can remember feeling that when I was, apply, you know, moving from like to a deputy and, and to headship that actually I had a great advantage in being male because a lot of governors. Yeah, I know. I know. Tend to be a head teacher. Many of them actually said head, headmaster. And, and it's just. I, 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 I don't reflect too much on that, uh, which I perhaps ought to, but. But obviously we were up against, when we were going through um, getting these jobs, you know, the feelings that others uh, of, of, of men and women, but how they felt about not getting the job. And I would, you know, I, 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 I hope that I was viewed as the best candidate, not just that I was the only male candidate. Um, mm. I hope that that, you know, reflecting on the, the interviews I had for Headship, you know, you do, you do, go back on it now and think mm, perhaps there was something yeah. there. I'm, I can remember being told for a couple of applications that I was considered too young. Yeah. Me too. Which was, you know, an interesting concept. <laughs> <laughs> Not too old and more now, but too young to do yeah. this job. Yeah. I, I, had, I had an urgency to get to senior leadership as quickly as possible. Um, I think primarily because the third, I, I, um, I've got to be careful what I say, but I, I, I saw leaders in, in the primary schools when I became a teacher not doing the job very well, and that sort of set the bar quite low. So I actually thought, well, I'm right, I, I could do a better job than that. And that's what it wasn't, I, I, I wasn't, I don't think I was arrogant. I just thought, you know, at times it was done so badly, you thought, we need, we need a different leader and, and I need to step forward, you know. I think mine was different. I, I did. I did serve under at least one head who I use as an example of, you know, what would they have done? And I'll definitely do the opposite. Um, but I did have some good models as well of, of things that were different to what I would offer. And I learned a lot from, from that, 
from, from right. particularly when I was a deputy. The head there was was really good. Uh, she was really good at dealing with the the difficult. It was in a in a city. So it was a, a tough area, but she dealt with the parents really well. Whereas I would at the time avoid conflict if I could. She she would hit it head on, which is what it needed. Yeah, I, le- I learned a lot from her. I think, uh, and the same, certainly as a deputy, I had a very, um, uh, in a very difficult school, well, relatively difficult school, um, uh, and the head teacher, would, it was during the teacher strikes, so there was sort of like, the uh, staff were taking an hour off at lunch, and we'd have the 350 children to look after the two of us with the, the middays and everything, and, um, but she was really focused on the children getting a good deal. You know, she even though she was a strong Labour supporter, she she stood in the way of those unions making life difficult for children who needed every help yeah. they could get. You know, so I, I think uh, um, I, I was and she was she was gritty, really gritty. You know, um, and uh, you know quite fearsome at times as well. But she it was the passion she had for the job. Mm. Similar to Jenny Webber, not well, not she wasn't Pearson, but that grittiness, that determination. You haven't worked for Jenny, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we must invite her back. Um, yeah. so, um, that's a tribute really to Jenny Webb, <laughs> yeah. the Um, so uh, thank you for that, Jennifer, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.